Brothers and sisters, welcome to what I hope will be the first of a series of short videos in which we spend some time together thinking about God through his word, looking at its application to our life, and especially in the present situation that we are living through. Uh, the priority for Christians, whatever is going on in our lives, is that we should seek to know God and know him better through our Lord Jesus Christ. We get to know him as we listen to his word and put it into practice. We're here on this planet so that we can glorify God in our lives and enjoy him not only now, but for all eternity. And the present coronavirus crisis is not a reason why we should stop doing these things or be deflected from that focus. But rather, I want to encourage you to see it as a stimulus to do these things more and more. Let's press more deeply into Christ through these days. To do this, we're going to be looking in God's word, and I'm proposing to share with you on a fairly regular basis some thoughts from the book of Philippians. We call it a book, but actually it's just a short letter that Paul wrote to the church at Philippi. This was a church that he had planted some 10 years earlier, he was in regular touch with his friends there, and he wrote this letter to say a thank you to them for a gift that they had sent to him and to encourage and help them, direct them a bit in some difficulties that they were facing. But why are we diving into God's word at this particular point? Why the book of Philippians? Well, a couple of things have drawn my thoughts in this direction. And the first is that Paul, like us, was living through a time of lockdown. Uh, for Paul, it wasn't coronavirus, it was Caesar that was responsible for his lockdown. Caesar, the Roman emperor, had put Paul in jail. We don't know exactly where Paul was imprisoned, or it may have been a, a house imprisonment, but we do know that he'd been told, like us, in no uncertain terms, by the government, you must not leave your home. In fact, he was chained to a guard night and day to make sure that he didn't go anywhere. He couldn't travel. He had to depend on food deliveries to his, his house or his prison, wherever that was. I don't suppose he had much choice in the menu. He had no internet to enable him to do video calls to friends, no telephone. He was well and truly isolated at this point in his life. And I think we can be pretty certain he didn't have any toilet paper, but let's not go there. On a more serious note, he was facing a, a very real threat of death, uh, not from coronavirus, but from the executioner, because Paul was on trial for his life and he was awaiting the verdict. So he writes this letter from lockdown, and that's one of the things that draws me to it at this present time. But something striking that, that pulls my heart to this letter is that it's in this letter, out of a situation of lockdown, under the threat of death, that Paul writes the famous words, I have learned to be content. And it's in this same letter that Paul writes, I rejoice. And yes, I will continue to rejoice. In fact, this letter is full of joy. It would be too much to say that it's the theme of the letter, but it's certainly the background music. And it prompts me to ask the question, what was it that Paul knew about living through lockdown that we need to know at a time of lockdown that will enable our hearts to be full of joy also? And I think that the answer to the question is really quite simple. Paul's heart was full of joy because his whole life was full of Christ. See, Paul knew that the big C ruling his life was not Caesar. It was not circumstances. It was not coronavirus. It was Christ. And knowing Christ in his goodness and his love and his grace filled Paul's heart with joy. Now this has been something known to Christians through the ages. We may be new to this present crisis, but Christians, whether through public events or through personal 
circumstances and difficulties, Christians for 2000 years have known this secret that when we are in Christ, Christ who is the King, Christ who is the Savior, Christ who is the resurrection and the life, then the story must end well for us. That is the promise that we have in Jesus Christ. And that can fill our hearts with a deep joy, even when we're battling through very difficult circumstances. I came across an illustration of this last night. Uh, current bedtime reading is a book by Amy Carmichael. The book is called Gold by Moonlight. Amy Carmichael was a missionary in India, Christian missionary. Uh, she served over 50 years in that land during the first half of the 20th century. For the last 20 odd years of her life, she was very much on lockdown. She was involved in a serious accident that left her crippled, bedridden, and in constant pain for over 20 years. From her situation of lockdown, she wrote many, many books, which have been a great blessing to people through the years. And seeking help from a wise Christian sister who had lived through great difficulties herself, I thought, well, yes, I'll read this book at the moment for bedtime reading. Here's a quotation uh, from what I was reading last night. Amy, writing from her own confinement, says this. We are always moving towards unimaginable happiness, though as yet we see only a shadow of good things to come not the very image of the things, but they are eternal in the heavens. The most satisfying answer to all the questions, the most comforting end to the sorrow that seems so comfortless now, the most beautiful end to our story, the most glorious of new beginnings, all this will be. And she follows that up with a quotation from our Lord Jesus himself, who said, if it were not so, I would have told you. That's good, isn't it? Ponder that. We are always moving towards unimaginable happiness. Jesus promised that we would share his joy. That's what Paul knew in his confinement. That's what Amy knew in her experience of lockdown. And we can know that too, as we focus on Christ. He himself said, if it were not so, I would have told you. Well, as we read through Philippians together, we'll find it's full of Christ. And as we ourselves are filled with Christ, so our hearts will find renewed joy. Let's pray. Father, please give us a fresh vision of the Lord Jesus that we may share in his joy. And this we ask for your glory's sake. Amen. Well, next time we'll start reading through Philippians together. I say next time rather than tomorrow because I'm not quite sure when I'll be able to next be back with you, but hopefully it will be within the next 48 hours. Meanwhile, I've got to prepare Sunday's sermon and have that recorded. But as soon as that's done, we'll be back in Philippians. In the meantime, why don't you give your soul a treat by reading through this book of Philippians. Feel the joy, inhale the Christ that you find in this book. Uh, breathe him in and you will breathe out peace and contentment. God bless you, dear friends. Bye for now.